Premiere Pro is all about creating great video from all the clips and the media assets that you have. Now, what we need to do with video clips is choose in and out points, rough in and out points, and quickly get them onto the timeline so that we can do a rough cut. Not a perfect completion, we're not going to go in there and get everything perfect to start off with, we're just going to get a rough feel of our video to make sure it works, that what we're trying to do will produce good results, that we don't need to move things around. So we want to produce something that's semi-precious. To start off with, you're not producing the perfect work, you're just producing semi-precious work, getting everything onto the timeline and then going in and finessing it at a later point. So we need to bring assets into our project to be able to do that and we need to be able to preview those assets and choose which ones we want to include in our project and not bring in all the other ones that we don't think we're going to use. Now we've already looked at the file import command, file import or control I for the keyboard shortcut user and we've looked at the double click option of the project panel to be able to import stuff but there are a few more options to be able to import items. And the first one to look at is the one that's right next to the project panel, which is the media browser. And when you go to the media browser, you're able to browse your computer and be able to find the media that's there. So I'm going to go to my C drive. I'm going to go down and find my desktop. And when I get to my desktop, I can move this around a bit. I can actually go and find my Premiere Pro final projects and go down to my C houses. Start. There we go and then all my media assets are going to be in there. And I can then take those assets and I can use them in my project. However, it's not always as simple as you think. Firstly, I'm just going to reset my workspace. Reset current workspace, yes, so it's back to how it looked. But I want to look at the media browser and I want to look at these items more clearly, so I'm just going to maximize the screen. And you'll notice that I've still got hover scrub. So I can still hover scrub over items, but what I can't do is actually create in points and out points. If I go to this point and hit I, and then carry on going and hit O, and then I click on the clip, you'll see that I can just scrub the clip. No in points or out points have been created. However, what I can do is I can look at my media, and I can scrub through the media, and I can decide which ones I want to use and which ones I don't want to use, which ones are going to work in my project and which ones aren't. And once I've got to that point, I can then actually add these items to my project if I wish. Now to add the items to your project in a standard way, you select the items that you want, so I want that item and I want that item and that one and that one, whatever you want, and then I can click and drag and take them over to the project panel and then drop them in the project panel and they're then added to the project. However, there's another way of doing it. In the media browser itself, if I want a closer look at an image, say this 3DC here, there's a particular wave I'm looking for and I can't find it with hover scrub. I actually need a more precise way of viewing it. Double click it and it takes your interface back to its standard layout and the item is loaded into the source monitor. And that gives me the opportunity to use my J, K and L buttons. So L to play forward and I carry on playing forward until I find what I'm looking for. Uh, am I going to be able to find it? Was that it? Nope, that wasn't it. Keep on going with J, K and L until I find the item I want. There it was. It's that wave that goes across just there. That's the one I want to use. I'm using J, K and L. So I can go to the beginning point, just say there, and hit I for in point. Notice, by the way, that I and O, in and out, are directly above J, K and L on your standard keyboard. So now that I've done an in point, please notice that I've got this dark grey area here which is saying I'm not going to show any of this video. This is header footage. This is all the video that I'm going to show. Now I could have clicked this button to mark an in point, but I would really encourage you to get to using J, K and L for playing forwards, backwards and stop. And remember if you do shift, J and L, you'll also be able to play back extra slow. And then use out, I could use this button here for set an out point, but I'm going to use O. So I'm going to push L to go forward until I find the end of the bit that I want. So it's going to finish after that crash, I think, just there. And then I can hit O for out. Now I've got tail footage, this footage here, which is not going to be played. This is the only bit of the footage that's going to be viewed. If I want to play in to out... Um, I need to have a button and it's no longer there. Well, remember, 
If you don't know what the button is or you don't know the keyboard shortcuts, you can always click the button editor and then find it. Now that's the icon for play into out. Oh, and it tells me the keyboard shortcut, by the way, control shift space. So rather than actually adding that button, which I could do if I want, I could drag down and add it in here, but I'm not going to. I click cancel and now I know that control shift space will actually give me play into out. And I can make sure that I've got the right bit that I want play into out. Okay, so now I'm on my in point and my out point. By the way, how do I get to my in points and my out points? Remember, I and O select them. Shift I will take me to my in point. Shift O will take me to my out point. So that's all selected. Brilliant. We're ready to go. Look at my project panel. Um, is that item actually in there? Hang on a second. This item's called 3DC. Hang on, so I've set it in an out point, but it's not actually in my project panel. What's going on? Well, you can view items and you can even set in an out points in your source monitor, having taken it from the media browser, but it's not in your project until you've either dragged it to your project panel or you've added it to your timeline. Now, to add it to my timeline, if I'm ready to add it, if I'm not ready to add it, I'm just selecting in and out points, I would drag it to my project panel. But if I'm ready to put it into my timeline, say I want it at the beginning of this sequence, my playhead, my current time indicator is at the beginning. All I need to do is insert it. Now I could drag and drop, but there are two buttons here. One's called an insert edit. Note the keyboard shortcut is a comma. And the other one is the overlay edit or overwrite edit, which is the keyboard shortcut of a full stop. Both of those will actually add it to my timeline. So with the source monitor selected, if I was to hit the comma key, you'll see that it adds it both to my project panel and to my timeline. So that's how I can finesse a piece of media from my media browser. By double clicking it, bring it into my source monitor, selecting my direct in and out points, and then either doing an insert edit or an overwrite edit. That's a comma or a full stop, which are right next to each other and underneath the L key on your keyboard. I can drop it straight onto the timeline. Can you see how keyboard shortcuts are going to make things quicker? I and O, in and out, directly above JKL, which below L is the comma and full stop key. And so you can go through selecting stuff quickly. There is one other keyboard shortcut which is really useful that stops you having to go for your mouse. And that's if you can learn how to select each of these panels. And they are found with the shift 1 to 8. So if I go Shift 1, you'll see that that is actually the project panel. Shift 2 is the source monitor. Shift 3 is the timeline. Shift 4, the program monitor. Shift 5 is going to take me to the effects controls. Shift 6 is going to take me to the audio mixer. Shift 7 is going to take me to my effects panel. And Shift 8 takes me back to my media browser. So if I want to go between these three, the project panel, the source monitor, and the media browser, Shift 1, project panel, Shift 8, media browser, Shift 2, source monitor. Okay, so those are keyboard shortcuts for using the media browser and being able to get around and stop having to use a mouse. But there is one other way to view your assets and bring them in to Premiere Pro. And that's found through the file menu here. And it's under this option here, Browse in Adobe Bridge. I'm going to click on that and let it start. Now, many people know Adobe Bridge from Photoshop and some perhaps from After Effects. It's important to say that whatever application you open Adobe Bridge from, that is the application it is likely to send items back to. Okay, so I've opened it from Premiere Pro. So if I double click, it will go back to Premiere Pro. But if I'd opened it in Photoshop, it will send items back to Photoshop. So I'm going to go to Desktop, and I'm going to go to Projects. But this time I'm going to go to See Houses Assets, and I've got some bits and pieces. I've got some audio picks and a PSD. So here are the pictures, and I can select any one of those pictures, and I can get a preview of it over here. And in fact, if I go to any of the audio, I've got audio. If I single click the audio, you should get a preview of the audio playing going to push stop on that one so we can preview the audio now if I want to bring in an item I can double click the item and you can see instantly it brings it to the project panel we go back to bridge here and I select a few items and I double click those 
it's going to bring all those items in so you can view and preview items in bridge so if I go back to my projects and I go back to my sea houses start you'll see that I've got all my items here and I can select any one of those and I can zoom in and bits and pieces it was a lot more useful before we had the options in CS6 however it still has its uses for being able to preview footage and work out if it's what you want to use and how to use it okay well I hope you found this tutorial useful about getting things into Premiere Pro and setting in and out points we know we can hover scrub and set in and out points here we can set in and out points in the source monitor and we can get things to the timeline really quickly with the comma key and the full stop key.